Hello everyone, welcome back to part two of the Howitzer um, free pastel class online at YouTube, um, Emma Hunt Art. Um, as you can see we've already done the first part which you can find on the YouTube channel. It's also posted on the Facebook page, Emma Hunt Art. Uh, if you have any questions you can contact me on my website as well, at um, which is emmahunt.art. Um, I'll just like take you through the picture again that we're, doing, we're going to attempt today. I'm just doing the classic thing that I do is like share my camera phone <laughs> um, a minute. there we go um, and as you can see this is like a really poignant image really and um, you know a sign of the old times and I hope not the new the new normal that we're coming into because you know as you can see um, this photograph that's been provided by Tom Dom Raiden is very thought provoking um, in as much as you know there's a beautiful scenery there and there's, there's, there's this guy sat up there on his mobile phone, not really looking around, and I'm just hoping that you know, coming out of all of this, we'll start to really see the beauty of our landscape again, and um, appreciate the things that are free that we can all enjoy, you know, without any troubles. But anyway, um, if you watch the first part, there's no need for us to, to go on about anything else. We'll we'll just crack on. Um, as you saw before last time, we started off with a mixture of palette colours. Um, it's nice to actually come back and revisit it because I can see already there's a couple of things I want to change in these hills here. First of all I want to define that hill properly. It looks a bit mushy and this hill here it definitely should have a bit more da darkness um, on this area here. I think I've lightened that out way too much and this is the beauty of being able to come back and revisit it. And that curve definitely goes up a bit. So, you know, sometimes it's best just to put it down, have a break, and then come back and see what you can see that is different that you, you, you could be doing. Again, with clean fingers, and I'm just going to tap that in. And I hope this will just make this, this a whole hill area just look a little bit more defined and a little bit more like it should look instead of just a bit too washed out. But I'm not going to bring in too much colour further down. I want this highlighted hair area here to remain, although I do really want to emphasise that darker area. Um, and I will get back to that. So at the moment I'm just going to concentrate on building these hills up to make them look a little bit more defined, a little bit more 3D. Um, I think it's important that we do get this area right first before we continue. So I'm just going to soften that edge. It's still quite misty and light over there. Don't need too many details. Um, but we also need it to look correct, don't we? We don't want it to look wrong. So here I'm just going to bring this colour up a little higher as well. Um, and just straight up. There's a soft sort of third hill. I mean, sometimes you just don't see these things as you're working through them, you know. Um, and it does pay to sort of revisit it. I mean, how many times do I forget the important things like a boat or something? Um, and sometimes you just, you need to just step back and have another look and go, okay, right, I know what I'm doing wrong here. So I'm just going to make this hill, just this little bit here, slightly more defined. So I'm just putting an extra line in and softening that. And it is now starting to look less flat and more shapely. And these little things are all important. I mean, it will push back. It won't be the end of the world if it's not perfect for your painting because it will be pushed back by the by all the features that are going on in the foreground. So it's forgiven in that respect. But I'm just looking at shapes, making sure these shapes are correct. I mean, I think that line is maybe a little bit too curved. So just bring it up a little bit. And these are all little adjustments that you're probably finding yourself doing right now. And it does take sometimes a little time just to work out things that you can see, you know. Um, but it's all really attainable. It just takes a lot of patience. So as we come down to this area here, I'm just going to bring these lines up a little straighter. It's definitely darker down here. So I'm just going to soften those lines and push them up in a way. Just to give the indication of different textures and things in that, in that hill. And I've got some darker green, which I'm going to be quite brave with. This is a blacky green, really, that I'm looking for. Bear with me, tick. Just try and pull that up. Um, where's my blacky green gone? Where did I leave that? Okey-doke. So 
I'm just going to, as you get further in the foreground, these, the depth of this is getting darker. So I'm now just going to, again, just follow those lines that I've created already. But I'm just going to darken it a little bit. This edge here could do have been a little bit darker as well. Just a tiny bit. I'm just using the slightest of touches again because this is quite a strong dark green. I really want to give the sense of distance and depth because you'll always get that if you're coming into the foreground with a bit more colour or a bit more darkness, you can always achieve that. So just going to push this up and over, soften the edges, push that one up a little bit, not too much, bit of a tap out maybe there. And then again, for these ones, very little in the way. I'm just basically trying to fix that colour down without losing too much of the depth because the lighter green underneath will make it a bit lighter. And that's all together now coming together a bit better and looking a lot stronger in terms of depth. Um, again, I just want to reiterate that line. So instead of um, darkening further, I'm just going to put a little bit of the light green over the top of this line and just retrace what I can see in terms of the image, trying to get it as accurate as I can. And this one is going to be quite a task for most people, really, but um, I urge you to continue with it because it, it will be worth the power in this. The message that I feel I get from this photograph um, is going to create a lot of interest from people that look at your work and they're going to be wanting to understand it and interpret it, but sometimes completely different to you, but this is how I see it, and you might see it a different way as well, and that's okay. Hi guys, so I've had a little bit of an interruption there with um, recording again, um, unfortunately. Um, but all I've done really is just revisit these green um, areas on the right. Excuse me, I'll just get the camera right again. Um, all I've done is revisit these areas here on the right, um, these hills and areas like so. I was just about to take a photograph, make sure I'm happy with what I've done in terms of giving it a bit more depth and a field and you know looking a little better than last time. So I'll just take a picture and then I can look at it and see what I'm doing wrong. All right. Um, I'm reasonably happy with it. I have to say though, this little road down here I'm not happy with. It just does look too nondescript. And as I say, sometimes you just don't notice these things until you um, take a photograph and just look at it from a different point of view. So what I'm going to do is just look back at the photograph and, and just try and really analyse that area and see where I've made a mistake up. And then hopefully I can make this area look a little bit more believable. I mean the first thing I'm seeing that I've done wrong is it's just too light. So I'm just going to go in a little bit with this dark green again. Just on the tops of it and then I'm going to redraw it back in with a, with a black charcoal pencil. So I'm just going to tap that in. It's just a little bit too light in colour there. It's not helping at all. Um, I want to bring the mist a little further down as well because where I put this little headland in, there's some mist that kind of moves up and over. And they, these are all important little little things, you know. Um, there's that little extra valley, that little tiny little island that I've added there that you've missed, I'm afraid. But, um, you know, this is all just me. All I'm doing here, I know you've missed a couple of minutes worth of my work, it's literally just a couple of minutes, but it does make a huge difference. Um, all I'm doing here is just working out what I can see and looking at the photograph. And you guys can do exactly the same as me. Um, you don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing. I know some of you sometimes just take the photograph and roll with it and then come back and check and that's fine as well. You know, if you're feeling good enough to, to try that, then um, I'd much rather that you give it a go on your own and then you can at least say, well, you know, I've done this without any help and um, it's based on stuff that you've learned over the weeks, you know. Um, I'd just love to see you just tackle it. Sometimes people just can't wait for the classes and go for it. Go for it. If you feel like you want to do it and I'm not ready yet or I'm not available, just go for it. <laughs> There's nothing lost, there really isn't. I'm just going to go and get the tissue there with me. So I'm sorry about the, um, about the lost footage. Unfortunately, iPads don't seem to empty their hard drive when you ask them to. And this isn't a very large iPad. <laughs> I think I need to find some proper equipment. 
um, in the future to do this properly so that there's no interruptions and everything moves. So it's something that's actually just dedicated to filming. But as you know, since the start of lockdown, this has been a completely new thing for me. I've never done videos before. I'm, I'm certainly very shy and very nervous all the time. Um, so this isn't my natural habitat, talking and interview, you know, and this kind of thing. So, um, yeah, hopefully we'll get there eventually. And I really do appreciate that everybody understands that this was a, a, just a last minute decision to try and help everyone. And um, I know that you're all getting the benefit from it. And as long as it translates, which it seems to, I'm happy with that. But I'm going to keep checking on my camera to make sure it's still filming a bit more regular, I think. Okay, so I'm just thinking about this road that I wasn't happy with before. I've removed it now. Um, I just thought it was too thick and it wasn't very believable. And really, I was putting too much information in because it just goes there and peters out. And that is it. And that's all there is to see there, apart from there's just a little bit more depth on this side of the hill. It's a little divot there. So we can pop that in and then just drag it across just to give that a little bit more shape. And I think now I'm relatively happy with the valley areas. Um, and I think that if you got to this point and you bared with me, um, you'll be feeling pretty accomplished too. It's, it's, it's a nice feeling when things start to look better. This has been a bit of a worry for me since um, before I started, to be honest. But now I feel a bit more reassured. Just looking at this foresty area here, it's got a dark grey, maybe it's a little path, I don't know. And there is some textures going on where the tree lines are, so you can add some of them in if you like. I'm just using my black charcoal pencil here just to add little tiny bits of information just to get a good feeling of what is here. Same as this part here, we've got um, crop markings. I mean, you can take this as far as you like, really, but we do have some crop markings that are curving that way. I'm going to put like just a few lines in and then just tap it back. So it just becomes an indication of rather than a definition of. Same over here. We can just add some little crop lines in. This area is lighter as well, so I'm going to utilise those lines and just tap it back a little bit. Down here we can add a little bit more lushness to these hills, these little trees down here if we want to. Just to give it a bit more definition. It's all about the building up and building up with your work. And I think, as I say, like I'm not happy with this road here. I know it's wrong, um, because the rock's there. I've got the big rock here. It does come down there, but it's more of a zigzag that comes up to this point. Um, so I could correct that if I wanted to, just by softly rubbing that line. And then I'm just applying a bit more of the, the green that was in that field. And then I can zigzag that right back up to where it belonged in the first place, which was definitely a sharper angle. So if we look at the, the rock, I think the rock probably needs to be a little higher than I've got it. It needs to be a little taller. So I'm just going to mudge that up, just to remind myself that this rock is a bit bigger than I first imagined it would be. And then we'll just go back in and look at this again. And it definitely is more of a steep levee up there. There is actually a little bit where it goes over a hill and then pops up again the other side. We can make that look more convincing just with a lighter, with just the lighter highlight on the top of the hill there. And go maybe a little bit lighter than that actually. There we go. Now that makes complete sense. So I'm a bit happier with that now. And I think I'm just going to leave that there because all of the work is coming up and that's going to be putting the rock in, doing the um, howitzer up here, looking at the colours that we've got there and um, breaking that down further. So this is where we need to be quite exacting. Um, I'm going to use black on this side of it because this side of it is very dark. The first thing I've just realised I needed to do is just bring that sky down a bit further. Just ever slightly unfinished. 
but I'm now going to attempt to join this crag. So looking at it, we've got a bit of a, a little bit of a swing to one side there, and I'm just going to pick up what I'd already drawn, and now start to put in lots and lots of fine details on it. Really, um, this side of it is very dark, so the black charcoal pencil is going to be perfect for me for this area. And I'm just looking again. We've got this curve that we put in here. Is it correct? It's nearly there. So we can use that as a marker for the lines and the, the little details that are on this crag to try and bring it as more accurate as possible. So I'm just going to continue on this line. And then we have a little bit of a bob there. And then we know that this line kind of draws from that edge looking at it and have we got the angle right and things like that no I don't think I have it's more it's more of a deep angle like so and then we have this area here which then meets up in this corner so all I'm doing right now is I'm just gonna bring in these areas and correct them or you know agree with them sometimes they're okay to begin with um, but the more details that we start to build into this, the more we'll see we've made mistakes and we need to just make little adjustments here and there. And that's one of the things you'll find out on the intermediate, that I'm by no means perfect. I'm constantly looking at what I'm creating and, and, and readdressing re it really. On this side I'm just going to go in with a lighter brown. Um, it's, quite, well, it's quite a dark brown but I just um, obviously don't want black lines showing on this. So I'm just again building up this image, it's the angle like, when does it finish, there's a crag there, it comes to about there, and then we have these pointy little edges rising up to this top of the crag. I'm not still completely convinced I've got the shape right, um, but as time moves on, I'll be more accepting of it. Um, Nothing that you ever do is going to be perfect, and as I said before, it's all down to interpretation. It's nothing, it's nothing personal or anything like that. You know, it's down to how you see it, and then you know your viewer will see it the same way, or they'll see it in a different way to you. Some people like some of my art that I don't like. You know, it, it's all down to interpretation. It's not up to you to decide if you're good enough. It's um, up to the people that enjoy looking at your art, and they'll decide what they think. And that, that's, that's the way it should be. Because sometimes somebody will absolutely love it and other times people will absolutely hate it. Um, but that's the wonderful thing about artwork is it's just so subjective. So I'm just coming around to this area here. I think that my heels are a little bit out. I really do want to bring this sort of copper ledge a bit higher. So I'm going to just put a line in there to remind myself about that and the shape of it coming down, it's very much like that. So I'm probably going to need to put some green in there. But for the most part now I'm just putting together this very, very iconic rock, working out the main features of it, adding more features than ever before, but um, getting a general idea. We've got a rock here, we've got lots of other little rocks and things down there. And then I think that this is in the right place actually. So this rock's maybe just a little bit more upright than I put it in. But this will all give us an idea of where we're going with it as we come around to fill it in the colours. Again, this area there. And this rock, it does come down further, so I need to add a bit of green and mask that area there where I've gone over. But it's not the end of the world. We've got this dip here that we can see the foliage in front of the rock, another dip, and then it comes quite flatly over there. In fact, that dip is more like that. So, we have some rock, a nice rock here, and I'm not going to be too exacting about this foreground again. It's in some place that is changeable. That rock is going to be there for a long time, people will recognise it. Things that happen down here get kicked and moved around. So it's not, it's not, it doesn't matter if you're not perfect, is all I'm trying to say here. So we've got a rock there, a little ridge coming from it. And then over here we've got that big rock there that I'd already put in. That's part of the side of it. This darker area here. 
and once we start to fill all this in, it'll come it'll come into focus more and be more interesting for you. So this I'm looking at the ridge now. How deep is that ridge? It's quite a deep one. Put in some highlights and like shaded areas to remind yourself where you're at with it as well. So this nice big rock here. It's coming down to the ledge about there. You have another rock here, triangular in shape. Again, it's not it's not necessary for it to be perfect, but this rock's a bit lower down than I've just drawn it, so I'm just retracing that in. And we have all these rocks up here. And then one of the more distinguishing things is this light area where this rock is. So I'm just going to put that area in there to remind myself that all of this here is quite curved. Comes down to the rock level. The rock level meets up with it. And then we have more curves going down that way. So now I'm just getting the shape of the land. I know that the, the colours are going to be covered over anyways with the um, pastel. So we're all these multi-levels. And you know, things like this, that rock I put in, I don't think it's in the right place, so I can move it up and just scrub it out. I think it should be about there, it's a bit higher up. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it does help to try and get them in the right places. Like your rocks don't have to look like the rocks that you see and all of that. I mean, this is this here is a challenge for me because there's lots of rocks here. I feel like I've got the tip of this rock in the right place, but it's, I don't think it's as big as I'm making out and I think it comes down a little further than I think it does. So again, it's just all about making these adjustments. So I'm just going to scrub that line out and bring that rock down a little bit. And then as well, I need to bring this curve over to that line there. So now I just need to do a few adjustments, just corrections. That's all it is. Just, re just revisiting where I've gone a little bit wrong. I'll fill that area in with the field, bring it up neat to the rock, we'll do. Again up here we've gone a little bit over, so I'm just going to bring some green in to that edge, just to cover that little bit of rock up and over the top of it there. You might find as well, like I have, there's some of your sky is not complete now because the rocks come in a little a little further than you first traced it. So just push push your sky into your rock and then you can always soften the edges that you've created there with a little bit of patience. But just fill in your edges and make sure that you're pretty much um, in the right place. Over here I'm just going to add a little bit more of this greenish white just to make sure that that's filled in. Push it along. I have a little bit of green coming off my finger, but I'm not going to worry about that. I can utilise that in the sky. There we go. I can bring it forward. So now it's starting to really take shape. I'm just going to check to make sure we're still recording, which we are, thank God. Um, this side is darker, so now for now, all we're going to do is think about shading. Um, I've got quite a dusty, dusty greeny black here. Um, I've got dusty brownie blacks. If you've just got straightforward black, that's great. I prefer dusty for the use of um, for the use on this kind of thing because because it creates its own texture. So all I'm going to do now is just use this dark colour and I'm just going to rub it onto the paper. I'm not going to do much else with it. I'm just going to rub it onto the paper because we're just now filling in colour and just filling in the dark areas of this rock, following in the direction of the way the rock is. Again, it's all directional, so just keep on with your directional stuff. It's all going in that sort of direction, in an upwardly way. Um, then we've got all kinds of things going on over here. We've got some darker areas. We know this is very dark, so we might as well go in right away with that. You know, down here is very dark as well. So I'm starting to now commit to the lines I've drawn in, rightly or wrongly. And um, where you've got sharp lines, by all means, as long as they're really dark, go in and pop them in. 
we've got dark edge on this side of this rock as well. And then down here, it's very dark. And then we've got all the rocks and stuff that are living underneath the shadow of this howitzer. Well, for, for now, I'm just looking where's my dark areas, and then I'm just going to dust, lightly dust everything, very lightly. Looking at shapes on, the rig, on, on this again, dabbing and daubing where there's more dark than other parts of the rock and then we can build on this as we build this rock up. And that edge is quite dark isn't it? So we might as well go in quite a thick dark line, bring it up to the edge down no further. A little bit more darkness here. But as you can see, all I'm doing now is like, where is the shading? And I'm just using the black to give myself that indication of the direction of the rock. Um, indications of different textures on the rock as well. And we're just all about building and building, okay? So I quite like that now. I'm getting an idea of where this rock should live. And we've got some other rocks right in front here. And some others here. But this area in particular is very, very dark. So I'm just going to reiterate on that with just a few wiggles. Observing what I'm seeing on the photograph. Always go back to your photograph, guys. Always take a photograph of your painting so you know where you're at with it. All of these things, all these little tips, they're all there to make life easier for you guys. And then what we'll do is we'll come in with a darker colour. I'm just looking at that. <laughs> yeah, so that's part of it. And I'm just not going to do much with that black because the black will work with me for the rest of the, of, the, of the rock. You might want to tap some of this back in places where it's less texture and less direction. Um, and all that comes with a bit of experience really to be honest um, but you know where you've gone too dark we can still adjust because we're only putting in the shapes but I'm just going to tap this black all around just because I'm filling in this shape now with the dust of this black and it'll just help with the texture of the look of this rock and everything else that comes with it because we've still got a lot of colour to add on there yet yeah? um, there's lots of browns, there's lots of oranges but I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring this, this land here into, into focus because I know it's wrong. Um, so coming back down to where this is almost about here, I'd say we've got this rigid area which drops and then curves and then drops and then joins this rock at the bottom. Which makes me think this rock needs to move on a little bit further than I put actually. We have a rock here that I've traced in. I'm just going to want to get this, and it's all kind of flowing downwards like this. But I just want to get this right, and then everything hopefully starts to look a little bit more convincing as well. So down to here. So I think that's the general shape of that ridge there. And then with a, uh, whew, actually, I think we'll use this kind of brown on the edge, it's quite a dusty one. There's little rocks there on this ridge. And then we've got a big little tree, an old tree living on the top of this ridge, so we'll put that in as well. It all adds to the effect after all. I'm just bringing this edges in so it's nice and muddy. We've got some rock, rocky areas here which we can highlight further with um, a lighter colour. I'm actually going to go in with a grey, where on the top of this rock will be a highlight, just as at the edge of this crag there's going to be lots of little highlights here and there. Okay. And then we have other rocks and things that are living down here that are in more shadow. And I do want to play with the colours here because I think that it needs a little bit more orange in there, a little bit more vibrancy. So before I go in too much detail, I'm just going to over-ride this a little bit. 
just with the orangey, this orangey yellow. A bit more texture again. More light bouncing off this ridge than the first thought, maybe. But again, I'm going in the direction of the way that that ridge is, is just falling down with that. And where we add rocks, we want to add shadow, a little bit more shadow. So we're just dabbing around underneath where we've got greys, this black, just to give that enhanced look of shadows on rocks. There's quite a few actually. There's that bigger one there at the top. Underneath it there is one standing on its own on an angle. On a jaunty little angle, and we can just give them lots and lots of different highlights and lowlights just to make sure that it all stands out and looks rather nice. There's a stone here, more in the foreground, a bigger one, bolder. We can add some texture to that when we come back to it, and then as we get closer in here. Everything's a little more in the dark, so I'm just going to add the dark first. I'll just add the dark, and then we can add some rocks on top of that, because that's where it's more shaded underneath that rock. So I'm just going to carry on with this um, red ledge here. There's some details, to, further details to add, and then I'm going to just revisit this rock here because. The more I'm in looking at it, the more I feel it just needs to be a little, maybe a little taller than I put in. But um, I'm, I'm just going to make that decision when we get the seat area here in. Um, and then I'm just going to compare that edge and see if it needs to, I think it needs to sort of end more like here on that curvy bit that I put in there. Just that little bit there that you can see. I feel like it needs to be a little bit higher. But this is what happens when you're drawing and when you're painting. You're constantly reassessing. And lucky for us, and lucky for me, especially um, today, that, 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 you know, pastels are quite forgiving. On the whole, are quite forgiving. You can get away with quite a bit before it's absolutely destroyed. Um, so I'm just going to add a little bit more detail in here. Darker cutting in on the edge of that ledge there. And then in this area here, we have this. Now all I'm going to do is just dust it with some this dark um, black that I've got. I'm just going to dust it to add shape to it. Um, the dustiness just creates an automatic rock effect really and um, we have some darker rocks down here so I'm just going to put in shadows actually I think we'll put in the tops of them first so we have this rock, rock here it probably needs to be a little darker on the front of it so a little highlighted area just on the edge of it there so I'm going to leave that there and then in this darker area here we have some little rocks I'm just using the grey just putting a little bit of tops of the rocks in first and then we have quite a big rock here there's some colours on that that we can add in in a minute I'm just going to basically dot that around it's pretty nondescript so just with a few little scrapes like that it should make its own little way in life without much help from me and um, as I say there's a bit of colour so I've got a bit of a yellowy glow to it so I'm just going to add in this light peachy colour here Adding some highlights to that rock. On this side here, there's a little bit more highlight on that. And then we just need to just add some extra grey bits and then put in the shadows underneath them. When we come along here, <coughs> we've got some of these yellowy glowing rocks there. So on the side of this rock, I'm going to fill it in the dark area first. Bring it all up into line with this edge of the rock. We've got that triangular shape coming down from here. So I'm just going to lighten the top of that with some grey, just to bring it into focus so that it's got some highlight on it. And then tap it back. It just disappears into the darkness really on that edge. And here we've got these sort of yellowish rocks sitting up, getting a bit of light. Another one here just sitting on top. And all I'm doing, I'm just carefully just judging what's in the picture and just emulating that. And then underneath these rocks that are here, they're quite 
shadowed underneath, they're quite tall rocks. So I can emphasise that again, just building the shade around it. A little bit more definition on the side of these rocks and a little sharpness of the black. And then with this definitive line, dark, joins up with that rock edge there. You might want to <coughs> lighten that a little bit and then enhance it with some highlights like so. Just tap it in and then we have another rock here sitting in the shade. It's quite dark as it goes underneath the rock so we'll tap that right back up into its edge here. And we're just going to carry on building and building these rocks like so. Okay, we're still recording. Okay, we've got an issue with that at the moment, unfortunately. Um, and then we have further grey rocks here that are just falling downwards into that little area there. And I'm just now going to use the orange just to create that barrier that's sitting around the rocks. We have a great big mossy bit here. And I'm going to start to now, using the side of it, to really emphasise the textures and the direction of this mossy area and as we come further into the foreground it lends its more self more to this orty sort of uh, non-rusty colour really. And I'm just going to scrape it down, a little bit of a wiggle in places and using that just to highlight the light and dark that's already on here. And just as a wiggle and just following that curve downwards all we need for this and then we've got more sort of pinkish hues in amongst this so if you've got like a lot of colours you will get a better effect by applying all these different colours that are coming into this into the foreground now they all help give us this idea of what's going on lots of different hues here and bring it down to that mossy area. So just here um, we have a little bit of land that's just set back a little with that dark shadow. I'm just adding in all the little details now. Again for these rocks I'm just going to put in little highlights with the black, dim them down a little bit so they've got more texture. That's what we want. Give you work a blow when you need to. Um, and on this area here, it's um, choosing the green, it's green and yellow, so it's quite dark at this base area. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to thicken that shadow and push it up a little into that mossy area. So it's a more uniform blend. Let's pick up a tissue and sweep that down. And then where you've got these, start sweeping them over using colours to just push into each other, okay, all those different textures that are happening up here. And then I'm going to apply quite a vivid green, but I'm also going to apply some yellows on this mossy area, but there's not much there, so just dab, 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 that's all I'm doing, just a straightforward dab, dab, dab. Where the shaded area is darker, I'll probably apply, I'll probably apply more pressure just to push that colour back when I come back to it. And then we've got more of a rusty yellow sitting on top of it. So I'm just going to highlight that with this rusty yellow dabs. Just dot, 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 that's all it is. And as I say, as you're coming into this area here where it's darker, just give it a good dab, push it back, push it back so it just sits behind and it looks more shaded there. And we can define this more with pencils as well shortly, which we will do. Again, I'm just putting in the idea of shapes, filling in the, the, the dark areas where there should be some shadows. They're all living up here for a long time, so let's do them justice then. And now we can look at highlights on this rock edge here. We've got quite a distinct highlight on there. So now it's just a case of constantly assessing and looking at the photograph and working directly from the photograph here. 
and everything I want to create or emulate, um, it, it, there is a degree of precision. It's not perfect, but you know, you want it to be recognisable. You want people to go, oh, I know that. That's the howitzer. That's how crack, crack. And all I'm doing now is I'm gonna just do the the bones of the highlights of this rock, and then we continue to develop it and. Obviously, the more details that you put in, the happier you are with the composition. And you do spot the odd thing that could do with a bit of changing. I'm just scraping now with the side, again, of this grey. I'm utilising the texture, it's the limited textures in the paper because we've used the soft side. Um, but you can be both soft and hard with your pastels, creamy or dusty. And they all give you a different effect each time. I'm just going to straighten that up a little bit and soften it. Some of these lines need to be harsher, some of them need to be softened. But this is all down to your interpretation. So now again, I'm just going to use this grey to add texture to the rock. And then I'm going to go in darker again, probably. But for now, I'm quite pleased with the way that the pastel is going on here. And we have lots of dark and light to put on yet. So this is quite a soft grey that I'm using. Apply too much of the softness, it gets too muddy. So just build in layers. Using the hard, just the hard edge to get some sharper lines, which you can do, like so. Back up here, we've got a bit of yellowish reflection up there again. I think what I'll do is I'll lighten it first. That's too dark. So we'll lighten it first with a bit of grey, and then we'll go back in with the pink where it's like a peachy colour, just to soften that. Because we've got all sorts of colours hitting this rock. I mean, there's quite a lot of this pink in here as well, following down that line. Just going to soften it, it's just a little too strong. And it, <coughs> and it all just boils down to building your light and dark, light and dark, light and dark, the whole time. You know, you'll see some bits need to be darker than others. With this area here, this is quite a deep cut into the rock there. Quite a deep cut into the rock there. So we'll have quite a lot of shadow. And then leading up to it on this edge is quite deep again. So now I'm adding further layers of, of dark and light. Because it's just about building up your confidence with what you're producing really. And then the more information that you put onto it, the more that you become satisfied with what you're producing. So up on this edge here, it looks a bit like a bum, and it doesn't look like a bum. <laughs> so I'm just going to sharpen that tip up there, a little one up there as well. And I can always go in there and, and change that again. I'm not too keen on, it looks too muddy. So I'm going to definitely soften that and put some more definition in. So I'm, I'm going to go back in with a bit of white actually. And just very, very carefully, because I've gone a little bit over. I'm just going to push some of that in and across. And then I can, with a clean finger, soften that sky. And that just gives me that thing that I've been missing back in place. Now coming over to this edge of it, it's more browns and russets. So there's less of, the, of this dark black and more of this kind of thing might want to touch it up with a bit darker, which I probably will do. And then it comes down, stops, comes down, stops, comes down, nice and pointy area there. Curves a little. And you've got a bit of a wiggle. I'm not going to adjust this actually, I don't think it's that important to get it at the exact height. I know that it needs to be taller, but I think that for the, for the artist, like sometimes it's best to just leave it alone and just concentrate on what you've got already. We've got some area here which is a bit too dark. I'm just going to correct this while I'm here. Just going to soften that, push it into the brown, trying not to hit the brown. Very gentle. This is why I love pastels. You're so involved with it in a physical sense. And it's really nice. So. So all I'm doing at the moment now, um, sorry you can hear the noise upstairs, Steve's on the phone, um, but yeah, all I'm doing now is just starting to look at the colours 
and applying the right kind of colour to each area. Um, and we have the dark brown here, so I'm just going to make that edge more defined with a bit more shadow. Some of these are seen a little darker than others. And then down here, this goes quite dark. So we can put that in as well. And overall, it's starting to take shape. In this area here where we've got this dark one, I'm going to go back in with my black, my dusty black. This needs to be quite defined as well. So it kind of goes over and up. It's quite dark and then I think we've got some greens up there and stuff like that as well. So I'm just going to fill in the darker area first and then um, I'll accentuate following this line that I put in already. Let's make it dark where it needs to be dark. That's very dark, that sharp edge there. And um, here, going a little bit over, I'm just going to bring it down that way. And this line here is quite strong. Again, it's all about, right, okay, where's the light? Where's it really dark and where's it really light? Just building and building. So this edge here, you've got this fissure that comes down to that edge. It's quite dark on this edge. I'm going to darken it further with some more of this black. Again, just following the general shapes that I've already created. And observing the shape of the rock, everything helps. Sorry about the silence, guys. I'm probably in a conversation that Steve's having upstairs with his boss. <laughs> um, <coughs> right. So, <coughs> again, it's just a case of now I want to get this line quite accurate. So now I'm going to go in with this dark black pastel. There's a nub there. And it's not very straight, but we're just going to follow the line that we've drawn in with this dark colour. Because this side is pretty dark and pretty black. Um. Here we have a little bit more dark than I we already put in. And obviously we've got this brick or this um, rock on this side. And then we have some flat rocks sitting along this right ridge here. Um, so we'll put in the underside of that one to give us an idea of where we're at with it. Um, just going to make that line a bit darker there as well so this rock really does stand out. And again, it's a question of, is it too light, is it too dark, does it need more work, does it need more shape? This one here, we've got a fissure just there. But the more we build it up, the more confident we become with what we're putting together. This fissure is quite a thick shadow, so I'm going to add that in. Quite a thick shadow, there we go. And we had a rock sitting on the top of this line. And the line has kind of been lost, so the sharp edge, we're just going to bring it back into the fore. And we have another rock that's more prominent here. So I'm just going to darken that grey slightly with the edge of the dusty one. And then over here it's more dark brown, so I'm just going to leave that for now. And just using the side of the pastel, let's add some rocks and lines, some shapes, give it more definition. And there we go. So it's starting to come together. Um, it does look a bit messy at the moment, but we'll start to pad in some of these differentials that we've added. And we can bring it all together a little more. So I'm just using what I've got on my finger just to darken and lighten or strengthen areas that I know need more work. It is a very, very dark rock, but um, I am mindful of the fact that I don't want it to just be a black silhouette. So this is why I need to just gently build and build over this edge. We have bit of a curve there in the rock, 
and the darker edges we can be a bit more dark but we also want to maintain these highlights as well because we don't want the black to just totally take over do we um there's another little hole there and line coming from it and that fissure there it needs more highlight on this side of it so I'm just going to get rid of that grey there I'm just going to soften that in and then I'm just going to create more of a ledge put it there this side of it would have some more highlights the top of it there on that side has some more highlights but I'm just using the pastels in the best way I know how just to emphasize all these dark bits and light bits and we've got moss and all sorts of things going on so it is quite a lot of work and um, we'll be continuing to learn more and more and getting harder and harder if that's what you guys want I don't want to overwhelm you so I'm just using the sharp edge now just to show this sort of crumbly rock it's on its edge here and this lighter brown will help me just put in some highlights where we have some because it's not all just black you know just taking in on board just looking at different little features that are on here we have some dotted areas we have more lined fissures there um, we have more darkness behind this line here so I'm just going to bring this rock forward a little and just highlight it and make it a little darker so it sits behind this fissured area more there we go and then obviously at the top here we've got more browns and things like that to add but what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm just checking again the shapes so here this is quite a flat area which I've missed so I'm just pushing that along to emphasize that flat area and then there's a little bit of a shadow coming around there so I'm just softening that and then we can add another rock here sitting on top of that one and then we have some little features again using the sharp side just going to push it off and then it kind of to help us uh, distinguish that this rock is going in that direction as well then we'll do that have a little bit of a highlight so all these little scrapes and scratches now are starting to build up the sense of, of rock we have all sorts of things going on that we need to think about so I'm putting this grey ledge back in sharp edge again sometimes we lose things as we start adding details but we can always come back and add more I might add some of this yellowy colour into that just to continue with the way that that orangey light is coming in and um, here we do have quite a bright rock um, sitting atop of that one which is something else I've missed but as I say it's just all about going back and forth back and forth revisiting until you get what you want from what you're doing with your pastels so I'm just going to highlight that a little further with some grey and then emphasise that's come to an end just with a little bit more black scrape in the direction of the rock again we have a deeper and darker cut there so it's all about the details now and it is difficult because you, you're transferring from essentially just colouring in to now building an image um, but you're all more than capable of this I mean I've seen what you can do so we'll continue and hopefully keep growing together I really love doing this and um, you know as I've said before if you think that other people would, would gain something from this in any way then please do put them put them in touch with me let them know about this page let them know that this is free and it's there to help anybody that needs help and that needs something to just give them that sense of of normality if anything else you know I'm just going in with a lighter green now just to highlight these mosses but because I, I don't have that light green that I want so I'm going to muddy it up a little bit, but we've got little bits of green moss here and there. But I'm just going to soften that up. I don't want it to show too much. You know, it's too it's too bright a colour, but I don't have an alternative colour. So I'm just adding in these green bits. We've got dots and all sorts. So now we could go in with some white now and just add 
even more texture to this rock. Um, there's going to be dotted areas where there's a little bit more light or a little bit more shale or whatever it is that's poking up. I mean, this line here was completely wrong, but as I said, it's all about the learning process. I can cut that out just by applying that um, extra bit of darkness there. So it is starting to gradually come together and I knew this would be a challenge. I mean, it might be that we may even go over to three weeks. I don't want to give you too much and overwhelm you um, with the processes of learning pastels. I want you to just enjoy them. This area here, I'm just going to create a little bit of shadow so that you can see the curves a little bit, a little bit more going on there. And this area does need to be very dark. And again, we can add some mosses in. Um, I'm going to go for that quite yellowy green. There's some moss living in amongst these bricks as well. So just dab, dab, dab here and there. Some sitting on top underneath this rock. There's so much things living around here, you know? It's not just this dude sitting there on his phone, um, letting the world go by without noticing what, how beautiful it is. It, there's a lot more going on. So now I'm just going to look at this ledge again. Quite happy with the colours I've created, but I'm not happy with the shape um, on the side. So I'm just going to get, excuse me, I'm just going to get a dark brown. And um, I really want to reiterate this shape here and make it more discreet, more befitting of what I can see. Um, it's not perfect, but it will stand scrutiny enough you know it's recognizable I don't think there's any doubts where it is there we go and I'm just gonna now push and pull about a bit just trying to eradicate some of the paper marks that are still showing through and it's just a gentle dab and push and pull You can see that, that's nice straight edges there. It's a nice little rusty bit up there. And it's just a case of working out if you need more detail, if you don't, um, you know, um, you can over, over egg anything really. So I'm just gonna now start to use the pencil because you'll have more, a bit more control with it. Just darkening and lightening some areas up. I'm just bringing this more into focus, into the shape a bit. This area here, there's a def definite um, area there that is not showing up very well. So I'm just going to darken that, press it down, and bring some of that grey over it. And just dot some marks here and there. I'm not getting too fussy with it. And here we have a dark fissure there, a dark one there. So we've got quite strong with this black here. Don't be afraid of using black. In this area here, I'm quite happy with that. We've got quite a cubic, sort of cube shaped um, rock here that's picking up some light. So I'm just going to add them in lines really and then the other side of it black highlights again and we just continue building up in this way um, you can take this to the nth degree or you can be satisfied with a reasonable simple composition um, but the idea is for me personally is I want to create that realism every time if I can. I want it to look convincingly like it should um, and just applying all the little details where I can but without muddying it up because you get to a point you know where you can't really do much else with it. If, you, if it gets too muddy you're stuck so the best thing to do is work in stages and you know walk away from it if you're not sure you're not happy with what you've produced walk away from it come back to it and look at it again 
and I'm sure then you'll feel a lot happier with what you've produced. There is some kind of brush here, but it doesn't really have a colour, so I'm just going to do some little dabs with the white. Just that's it, that's all. And I'm just going to add another little dab above it. These things that are living here. You can give them a little bit more colour with a little bit of light grey. But on the whole it's pretty indescript colours. Nondescript even. On the side of this ledge here we've got bits of moss. So just give it dabs. Dabs. Just little dabs here and there. That's all it needs. And up here again. We're starting to see a lot of texture on here. So there's things living on the rock as well. We've got a little extra living on top of that rock. So let's put that in. Just little dabs here and there. Just to show there's more going on than a rock texture. And there's all sorts of things living up here. And because it's quite bright, I'm just going to tap it back, tap it back, and just soften that green. I don't want it to look too bright. Where you've got like these bushes, by all means, give them a bit of shadow underneath and above. Just don't leave a little shadow where they're living. Again, it just adds to texture and form. I still think that's probably a bit on the bright side, so I'm just going to dab, 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 dab. I can always go in with a little bit of whitish flowery colours. Just to lighten it more. And then we can concentrate on this area over here and get the boy on, Callan, who's modelling for, I don't know, Dom, is, is Callan your son? I'm not sure. <laughs> should know that really. Okay, so again, where you've softened things, you also want to strengthen things and reiterate any changes that you've made can be softened a little bit. So it's a case of continuously going back in and redefining harsher lines. Like for example, that one there is quite a deep one, but there are highlights on its leading edge. So let's put that in. It kind of comes down like that. So now I'm just going to take a photograph because as I've always said, this is the best way to know if you're making a good job of something or not. <laughs> And the jury's out with me at the moment, but I'm always doubtful, <laughs> as you know. I'm always questioning and always asking myself if I can do it better. But that's normal for anybody that loves art, that you will you will ultimately um, be constantly wondering, should you stop there or continue, you know? And yeah, that, that's finding the balance then of knowing when it's good enough, even if you're not happy with it, it probably is a work of art for someone else. So... There's many that I really don't like that I've um, got. See, I think that looks quite dark now I'm looking at it on the camera. Um, I'm going to go back to the photograph. Um, let's have a look. Actually, it's not. It's not. It's probably just the way my phone's taking the photograph. That's another thing you need to watch out for. Um, I'm just going to take now a swab, one of these, and I'm just going to soften, like work on just correcting some of the edges here because I'm not too happy it's not too sharp looking so I'm just going to go around there give it a blow you're going to get some black dust if you do what I do try and blow it away from the direction of your lighter colours if you can um, she says in hindsight <laughs> but we're still recording so thank goodness I've still got something to show you and, um, and then I'm just also going to use this to just scrape off some highlights if you like because you can use this to sort of lift in places as well you see what I'm doing there um, you can use it for the padding on colour as well it's just it's just a cotton bud that's all it is in your bud but it gives you a little bit more access to areas that your fingers are maybe just a little bit clumsy on but it also helps you soften things Right, 
So, we're getting somewhere now, and really the foreground part of it isn't going to be too difficult. So now I'm just looking, I'm happy with that shape I've got there. I'm looking at the colours again. This brown does kind of blend itself down into that crevice, so I'm just going to add a little, whoops, and then just drag it down just to soften that edge. And we have this deep area here that we've already placed in. And I can see that it's a lot darker on the underside, so I'm going to really emphasise that rock there. We're going to add a little bit more darkness up and around that little rock that's sitting underneath. And we have a sharp edge there, another little sharp edge, and it's just a case of building up your confidence, as I say, with your colours and with your application. This rock here, I'm going to use the dusty one just to add some texture to that, just giving it a touch, just a little touch of the dark colour. And then where I've got some of these pinkier looking things, we can put more lines in using the side, sharp side again. And it all comes up to this seat up here, which thankfully we're going to put him in soon. And then, you know, we start to get the feel of it and the message behind it. Let's hope this is the old normal, you know. No children will appreciate nature. Um, I'm not saying the Callum wasn't the sole part of the, you know, the, the 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 message I guess from it was that probably anyway, you know, because his dad's very very good at um, if it's his dad, at thinking of of subject matters that are emotive and things like that. He's very clever. Just gonna now add some bigger indents in here. Now then, at the top, a little highlight, just coming down from the seat in grey. It's not too dark up here. I'm just going to dapple the grey about here. I'm not going to go into too much worry with it. It's just spots and dapples. And then obviously, we just need to apply the browns again. So over the top of this, it seems to be mainly brown. We go in with a darker brown on top of it. And then this little edge that comes down like that, where we have Callan sitting. So I've got a um, darker brown here. I'm not worried about my pastels living down there because we're going to put so much colour there, it's not really going to affect the overall finish of it. So I just want to make these edges a little darker in places. Little edges of it that drop down a little more than others. And then we can add some of this brown in the front of these rocks as well and we're going to add some really nice bright brown highlights from light colours like this one again so it just brings it all together the little rock living there tap them back if you want but it's now really starting to look like it should um, some of these rocks probably need a little bit more shape in them because they just look like nothing in particular right now but always remember there's going to be a little shadow underneath them or around them just to give them a bit more shape and I think apart from some of the brown dark brown highlights that need to go underneath this seat here a little more um, just going to bring that down to that point there and then of course we have the edge of the rock on here. So I'm getting quite happy and confident now with what I'm producing. Um, it just takes time really and effort to just start keep building and building. As you can see there's quite a few times I've not been happy with what I've produced and I've had to go back and, 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 and revisit it. But that's the beauty of the pastels. They, they are very forgiving. Um, now I'm actually going to be brave because I don't want to do any more work over here when I know I'm going to be putting my hand on this rock and I really don't want to um, but I really need to get the shape of this fella so I'm just using a black pencil and I'm going to start with his leg very skinny little knee right over the edge here and this way you're going to have to be very brave and he just pops down he's not a big guy is he? he's only a little guy but he's there with a message and so we have to get it right and his bottom 
me working upwards, it would be easier, I think. So there's his legs. And he has some white socks on. I don't mind that go over the edge there because I can easily soften that with the um, with this thing here and just bring it in line. It's just a hint of things that are going on. And I'm probably going to go in with a black pastel, but for now I just want to get this right. So I'm trying not to lean on my rocks. So here's his little feet. Just casually sitting in that direction. And he has a white um, tuxi, sort of like, no, it's like, I don't know what it is actually. <laughs> um, he's got a hoodie underneath anyways, so I'm just going to get the white and build in his arm. So obviously you need to work on perspective again. Um, his waist goes up. I mean, his legs have got a bit more meat on, probably come up a little higher. But this is all about working out. How to get a body shape right. So I'm just going to bring his, his torso up a little. His arms are just sitting just all above. Straight part of his leg. Nice and straight. And then we can put in his arms. You can see I'm kind of catching the rock a bit, which is a bit of a shame. So his arms. Again, using a white, I'm not going to be too finicky because the white isn't going to be so strong as anything else, but it's how we draw around that. So, I mean, it's probably very difficult for you to see this arm, um, but I'll draw around it and then hopefully you can make more sense of it. Okay. So this is the nervy bit, really. Um, his back's slightly arched, so I mean, think about his bottom going up like that. And then curve it over where his arm is. And he has this waistcoat type thing on. It's pretty thin though. It's not much between the two. But we're getting his overall shape in now. So that's his arm in. And then if you can find like a fleshy coloured pencil that can be quite difficult you might need to use um, a couple of different colors to get what you want I mean his skin tone probably has a little bit more yellow in it so I'm just going to get light pink and yellow and then I'm going to work from it on there so the light pink I'm just gonna his, his hand is about here drawn in roughly where his arm is already even though you can't see it so his hand is roughly there and as you can see, it's too pink. You can add a little bit more orangey in it. We can go darker as well if we need to. I think we do. I think we definitely need to go more brown colour. So let's go in with a darker brown. There's his hands. And obviously, he's got his mobile phone in there. Just draw a little line. We'll go back in with this browny colour to do the face and then we can we can tidy it up. So his head sat forward. So we're just gonna work out roughly the part of him that is flesh and then the part of him that is hat. Because obviously I'm gonna lighten this up. So there is his chin and face. I can't get much detail in other than that. And I'm just going to lighten him up with a bit of pink. There we go. And then he has this um, well, odd head, head garment, really. I don't really know what it's about. Um, but it's, an, it's quite modern looking. And I'd love to get the shape in. But as I say, like with pastels... He's tiny, and so it's probably going to be impossible to get that shape in. But I'm just going to follow what I can see. Put his hat on. Definitely needs to be a lot darker than that. So 
So I'm going to go over it again with the black. Hairline is about here. And there he is really, you know, I mean, I could probably put more and more detail in, but I think that, that that's good enough actually. Um, he has got a bit of a hoodie on, so I want to try and make sure I can get that in at least, just so it looks modern. And obviously you can't really see the shape of his arm, you can't see that. So now we're going to have to be just a little bit brave and think about light and dark again. And... Um, reflections and stuff so I'm going to go back in with my black give that a blow so I can see where I'm at with it because there's a lot of dust on there and underneath his arm I'm just going to use a little bit of a highlighted area little tiny touches of just bits just to accentuate that further and because I started off gently with him his form works you know it doesn't look wrong because I've just gradually built, it, built up my confidence in this guy's body shape. And again, I'm just going to, with this headgear, I want to make that look a little bit more standy outy. And give him a blow. And I think that, like, other than maybe blackening the black a little more with, like, um, a bit of black pastel, but there's always a risk when you do that. Like, it will intensify him as a figure. But at the same time, like, it's very hard to get the line exact because these pastels are so thick. Um, so you may decide at that point that's good enough. You may decide that you just want to add a bit more blackness into that. Um, but it is a risk. It's always going to be a hell of a risk to add extra colour. So I'm going to leave him there for now because I'm going to continue with the rest of it. If I feel that he's not standing out enough, then I'm going to have to revisit him. But at the moment... I'm just going to leave him where he is because I'm happy with all of this now and you know it's just a case of now we've got all this foreground to do let me just check that we're still recording which we are thank god such a worry um <clears throat> I think like looking at his thigh I'm just looking at that again it's too curved so I'm just going to actually bring his knee up higher and just flatten that line a bit I'd rather him look a bit lanky than look a bit bendy, like me. There we go. That just looks a bit better. Right, so I just love that now, because he's the guy that I wanted to get right from the beginning, and there he is, and he looks all right, doesn't he? <laughs> so I'm just going to take a little photograph again, um, and then we'll continue and end this workshop. It won't take too long now. The foreground areas very much like what we've done before, we're working out the depth of it and then just building with pencils and stuff. So I really feel like we're getting there. And it is starting to look very, very effective. I hope you're enjoying this. It's now starting to look like it should. Um, initially it didn't look so good on paper because it didn't look so exciting, but we're getting there now, aren't we? I'm going back to this crack here. Like, again, you know, it, sometimes you just look at it a second time and you're like, oh, I've lost that really sharp line of that rock where it's dark and deep down there. And you can go back to it, you know, because you tend to pad things like I do. Then you soften these lines. And sometimes you do need to go back and say, ah, oh, right, OK, I've missed something out there that's important. Um, but, yeah, I think on the whole I'm happy with that. Um, we've got this mixture of rocks down here, um, things tumbling down. We'll come in and do the rocks next, but I think now we'll work on just filling in the body of colours that are in this area here and just getting this correct. So, um, we've got a number of rusty colours that we can use and browns. Um, the first, very first thing I've noticed actually is down here it's very dark. So let's go by, first of all, let's fill this in with, the, with a bit of black and take it up as far as we think it needs to go. I mean, there's some... We've got the bush there, and then we've got a darker area which kind of leaps up. And there's rocks sitting on there. So let's get all of these shaded areas in. Because it always does look more dramatic if the foreground is a bit darker, you know, or if the top of the sky is darker. It just helps just build up that 
the feeling of drama and depth. So you're looking through a painting and not at it. You know, we want the person that's viewing it and enjoying it to really get a sense of the depth and the magnitude of our beautiful sceneries that we have. So I'm just tapping this in for now, but it's definitely probably going to get a bit darker. So it's just flat taps with my three fingers. Nothing exciting, nothing complicated about that at all. That's giving me a sense of this foreground already. And I'm really hoping that you guys will get a lot from this. And I hope that the message does does get out that you know, um, there's there is um, a lot of beauty around us. And you know, I hope that we don't forget it. We've we've had a chance to appreciate the sort of the things that are free, really, that don't cost us anything. Um, you know, I'd hate for us to to go back from that. It would be real sad. But, you know, the youngsters of this have, have got all the work to do, really, in terms of cleaning this planet up. Um, and I know that, that, you know, not all teenagers sit on their phone and just look, and just go, oh, well, I'm not looking at that, it's just boring. I know, like, most most kids do appreciate it, but there is quite a lot of people that, you know, have not appreciated it enough. and <laughs> Appreciate it more. <laughs> so I've got a softer black here, um, but I'm going to complement it with other colours as well. But again, I'm just bringing in this depth, this darkness that's down here. Just a few wiggles, working out. Right, okay, we've got a little rock there, so we'll take it up to there. A little bit of a shim there. Just working out light and dark now, down here. Which we'll blend in with further down as we work from the top to the bottom. But I just want to get this sense of depth right first. There we go. So it's just wiggles, don't worry about it being too precise. Spread this shadow up a little because obviously you are going to get lighter as you're going up, darker at the bottom. So don't be afraid to allow some of this to bleed upwards. We're already getting a really lovely sense of depth now. And we haven't put any details in, any flowers, so we've got this big rock to do. We've got rocks and bushes to put in. But hey, look, we're winning. We're winning. We're winning this one. There we go. Again, I'm just going to take another photograph to make sure I've got the depth right. Check we're still recording. Um, I think you will agree that's not looking too bad. And um, we have got still quite a lot of work to do. Um, this has been probably the longest workshop that we've done yet, but I'm really hopeful that you know you guys have produced something really interesting out of this. And um, as I look at him, I do think that he's too light. So I think I am going to make the decision of um, finding a piece of black. And it's it's very, very, very risky. Um, but I'm just going to place my arm. If you can see the top of my head, apologies for that. And I'm just going to, even if I just get one line of darker colour in. Because as I've said before, pastel pencils are great but they don't give you the same intensity of colour and I don't want to ruin this with muddy lines either so it's a bit of a trade off now I'm happy with that now he's got his bum parked on there and he looks convincing enough to me ok guys so now we're still recording and we can go on to the next part of this Again, I just want to keep going back to this rock I'm sorry guys little improvements here and there. I'm sure you're always doing it yourself. So over here, now we know we've got some rocky areas and a little bit of a dip. So I'm just using this black um, to create that shadow. And then we need to start putting bushy areas in and stuff like that over there. That gives me an idea of the shadow. We have a rock here that sits in recess. So we'll have that shadow again over here. And then we'll just soften the top of it and sharpen the bottom of it with a scooch. There we go. Um, over here we've already done this but we've lost a bit of the depth because I've probably rubbed my fingers on it or my hand on it by mistake. So I'm just going to make that a bit stronger. And as we come down to these rocks we have this area that just comes up like so into the into the 
sort of weight or whatever you want to call it there. So I want to keep the idea of shape again just by using this black pencil. And then in this area here we have a bit of scoochie down and soften that. This is just all giving me indications now of where I need to be. My shadow kind of melts so I'm going to bring that down a little bit more into the edge of this. And then we have quite a dark area there with some weeds. So I'll just pat that in. Over this edge here we have a little bit of dark again which comes up to a point. I'm just looking at this area again over here. I want it to meet over to this point correctly. So I'm just now looking again at where there's shade and I'm just brushing it in gently. I'm going to lighten that anyway as we come along. But we want to create this embankment, this movement in embankment. And obviously here we want that edge this where the rock meets up and everything else just to be a bit more defined. And as I say, I'm just looking at this edge again, it kind of comes down like so, and then we have another area shaded here. But this is we're going to apply colour on top of this. I'm just wanting to get the shapes of this hill correct first. There we go. Just the shapes of the hill. And we have another area here. It's quite bright. We'll come with some bright colours in a bit. And just a sweep up. So all I'm doing right now is just creating shapes. So anyways, um, what I'll do is I'll just um, dab that a little bit and um, give you a little time to think about the same things yourself. Um, and I'm just going to actually turn the video off for a little bit and take a well earned break. And then we'll come back. And you won't even know I've gone, <laughs> but I'm having a break from it for now. And then um, we'll get to enjoy the rest of it later on. But for you, it will be just a couple of seconds because I'll edit it. <laughs> but it's break time for me. So that that just gives you the shapes that are going to be where you're applying. Going to be applying colour on top. It's quite dark, so we do want to create that depth. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with it, and we're on the last phase now, and we'll hopefully be finished shortly. So hope you're enjoying it. Um, be back in probably five seconds. So now we're going to get on with the principal foreground, which is down here, which we've just done the um, shading to build up um, the idea of what we're seeing here. And now we can start to really get into the rusty colours, the greens and everything else, and the rocks that we, we, we've got in this one. Um, so yeah, it's it's a very interesting piece and hopefully you'll find a lot, you'll get a lot from it. Um, so for now, I'm just going to now go back in with this red rust and I'm just doing a very little scooch, little up and down movement, just a little drag, nothing more, and I'm just adhering to what's going on here, just to emphasise that line, just the tiniest of, of information that we're putting in. And we'll go in with some pencil pastel pastel pencils as well shortly. On this edge, um, we've got some darker edges. So we'll just add these complement these bits with the same kind of effect. Just a very gentle, very minute up and down movement. Like so. I'm just going to add the depth of, of vision here so that we, we can see. Okay, it's all falling down the wayside down that way. We can go in with a blacky brown as well if we wanted to. And we 
we're just adding little details here and there. We'll add some more rocks into this front here, which we can see it's quite dark down the bottom. Not a lot of light getting there. And then obviously we have this brow. It's just about here. We can start adding all of this in now. And as you can see, the black areas really helps <coughs> draw the eye in, excuse me, um, to the fine details that you're putting on your pastels. And here we'll have some highlighted edges reaching down into the darker areas as well. And we've got some sort of salmon and cream colours as well, I guess, so we can we can put them in. I'm just trying to stick to the general shapes that are here and um, we've got this mossy area and we can add some more highlights just underneath it with this colour and away we go just adds to the details that we're going to add in as we move along Thank you. Um, so yeah, so we're just uh, Sorry about that guys, Steve's just caught a mouse that the cat brought in, um, but I've, I've had to stop and repeat this a couple of times today and I don't want to keep having to stop and re repeat because it's making more work for me. But having said that, you know, the mouse is perfectly safe and he's got away, so he's just freeing that little mouse for us now, bless him. <coughs> so again, just a little bit of a scooch, giving the idea <coughs> of bracken and mosses and everything. And we'll continue to add more depth and more colour to it as we go along. I'm going to go in with more of the orangey colours here. And again, just that, just a tiny little upwards movement. Just add, adding more and more light and dark to what we can see. And just making it more and more realistic looking. But it's, I'm following the curvature that I'm seeing in these glasses as I'm going along and then we will add the rocks in and stuff like that and some some nice little, little features and it'll start to come together so mouse has been rescued so that's brilliant he's away and happy in the fields I do love my cats but I really don't like them hunting I wish that they didn't but such is the nature again just a little bit darker on this corner, going with a darker green, with some darker lines on this side as well. But obviously your lights up here, this is more in shade. And we've got some darker areas that aren't so black, as over here. But we'll just continue to keep building these shapes and adding rocks and stuff. Now I'm just going to Tap that through a little bit, not too much, not too much pressure, just to meld these colours into each other slightly. And then here we have a little sort of rock sitting there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to emphasise that ditch a little further because it's quite a bit bigger than my ditch I'm showing there. And we have some rocks sitting down here as well, and some bright, bright oranges up there. So we'll start by adding some weeds just in front of here. And they're kind of growing in that direction, they're sort of falling over and downwards. A little darker. Again, a bit more light deprived on the edges. So we can expect that with a little bit more brown. And we've got a nice dark rock and sitting in front of it. And it is just a case of, as I've always said, just observing as well as you can these different features that you're seeing and different things that are going on. Okay, so I'm getting more and more happy with this. I think we're going to end up with a really nice piece. I'm just going to quickly check to make sure we're still filming. Thankfully we are. Oh man. <laughs> if anybody has any 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 advice whatsoever on what's the best setup, 
unfortunately I can't really spend a lot of money on it because these are for free. Um, so if anybody knows anybody that can maybe even just lend a camera or something just to help facilitate this because it's taken up so much of my week but I really do not want to let you guys down. I really do not want you to not have your lessons, you know, so I end up kind of giving myself quite a hard time when it doesn't work out, to be fair. Just get a bit more highlights and stuff in there. Push that back, I don't want it to look too strong. And then along here we've got more rocks. And again, the light just hitting the tops of them, nothing much else. Strong line there. And then it's just the side. Very lightly, remembering there's going to be dark underneath it. That'll do nicely. Um, we have some greenery in with this lot here. We're going to have a brighter green grasses. I'm just doing some lines here with this grassy colour. And there's some well highlighted and sitting up amongst these rocks and stuff. Just like that orangey bit of moss there. Come down here. I think the mossy bit can come out a bit further. And then we have colour bits and bobs living down here, a bit nondescript, but we'll just put them in anyway. Bright orangey russets coming up under it. There we go. Pretty nondescript, it doesn't have to be too detailed. I mean, for this bit up here, <clears throat> I'm just going to go in with that orangey, well, peachy colour. Just give it some highlights on the top of it. There we go. And again, I just want to really start to put indications of, of growth down here. Now we're not going to start. We're not going to be doing any more smudging or blending. We're just really going to start to make the pastel produce this texture for us. So the woods away there, down to a little grey rock. Just there. Mind its own business. We have some light grey rocks inset into the hill there. As you say, we can sharpen some of the things that we might have lost a little bit as well. Let's just sharpen these rocks that are sitting here. We have a nice flat rock. So we've got lots of, I'm just looking at this here, we've got lots of greenery, like a little rockery garden just there, before we met with this other ledge. And then we have more rocks the edge which we can ultimately enhance with shadow again and we have some down here as well but I'm not going to go too deep into that I'm going to use my um, dye black pencil just to make these edges a little clearer in what's going on And then, then we're going to start adding the black edges for the deeper, deeper little areas than in other places. And just let that be just an indication of things there. I'm just adding a little bit more black where I know this is going to come over and then down this way again. And again, just using the side of the pastel. I really want to follow the direction of these mosses and then when we come in to complete we can just add the grasses over it as well and it all looks very very nice and convincing so just remember under your rocks there's going to be shadows and this area here is quite quite a deep area so I'm just going to emphasize that further and you have some areas that 
more divots in there than you think. Use the side again. Use the side again. And all the direction these grasses. And you might want to make your rocks look more shapely. You can do that if you want to. So now I'm going to start coming in with just a little bit of some flicks. Not a lot, just little flicks. Oh yes, we've got a rock there, haven't we? So let's go and put that rock in there. Let's put him in there. He lives in there quite happily. Nice little shaded area for a rock to live. And then the back side of this is more shaded. So she's in the dusty black again. So it always works well with rock with rocks. Using a dusty black is a good one. And hiding in the dark in shadow from its brother is another little one. So we'll just give him an indication, a little indication. And there we go. So I think now we can start just adding, just we can get some different coloured reds and oranges. If you've got these pencils, that's wonderful. If not, just use a sharp edge of your pencil. Um, it's not the end of the world, but it does help a lot. If you're really getting into this, it, I can recommend that you buy um, pastel pencils because it does help. I try and keep it minimalistic in terms of my usage of them, but it does help. So just over here, I'm just going for the finest of flicks with the pencil, remembering that down here is darker, over here is lighter, so, excuse me, there might have some more yellowy ones on this side where we're getting more sun, put some grasses in front of your rock as well, all head adds to that realism, but with very, very slight little tiny flicks growth we don't want to give too much away back here because it would just it wouldn't look real because we wouldn't be able to see so much detail would we so we'll just continue with some tiny little flicks over and above um, some of the areas that we've been to but we're just going to keep it just very light remembering that down here is going to be darker so the grass where it gets light on it is going to be darker as well Again, just following the direction. Might have some grasses that are hanging over here, growing into that darkness there. But it's just the slightest of indications, and nothing more that's needed at this point. Just like this side, because we know it's darker. We've got some darker grasses. In fact, I will let the black charcoal. Might stand out a bit better over here. Darker grasses living down here. And it's just the same thing. I can get the right pencil because that looks pretty blunt. Do we have another one? I'm sure we have another one somewhere. Yeah, we've got a tiny little diddy one. That'll do. We'll get something off it. And yeah, we've got where we've got the darker shadows and bring in some darker grasses as well. And it's starting to really, really just look look like there's a lot going on there. And this is all about it really. It's just about applying your colour first, getting a rough idea where everything's gonna be, and then going in with your fine details later. So for example, here I know it goes pretty dark, but we can still see in that dark area, in the shaded areas of um, grasses as well. But we want to make sure that it's nice and deep looking, not too, um, not too intense. And then over here, we've got some greens. I'm just using the side. Now I can scooch a little bit harder with it. We have quite a big area here, quite a lush basin really of green which goes over just going to give that a wiggle gives me an idea of where I'm going with the next part of it 
We have dark green, some different ledges that can stand up a little bit more, and some bits that are more hidden. But, you know, it's quite dark down this bit. So we're just now going to think about how we come to this immediate foreground a bit more. So now we have the green. Just going to meld a little bit of this darker colour into it. I think what we'll do is we'll concentrate on the rock next and then we can get rid of all the, most of the greys because we'll just be adding some rocks on top. Um, this area here we're just going to put the little indications of darker bits going on in amongst that. And then we can head towards this rock over here which has quite a distinct shape. It's sort of triangular and quite mottled. So for now I'm just going to darken it with some black but I'm also going to be quite mottly with it in dots and dabs and stuff like that. But I'm also at the same time I'm not dabbing just indiscretionately. I'm dabbing where I can see there are shapes on the side. You know you can you can start working in these basic shaded areas immediately with the dark. And I do favour the dusty ones for rocks, as I've said, they, they just give you a bit more texture, a bit more to go on. And already that's looking, that's looking much better than it did before. So I'll go in again with my lighter grey. And then we can start thinking about, okay, let's get the shape of this nailed. We've got quite a light area here, which curves over. And then the sharp edge again to create these lines. And then on this edge, we have quite a big highlight. A little bit of a one there, but we're going to need to go in and darken that, I think. But for now, I just want the core parts of these rocks to show up. And then we put the fissures in. We can just build up again like we did with that bigger rock. So now I want to go in again with some more dark. And I'm just going to accentuate some of these spotted areas. Just with a dig in and a, and a scrape and a dot. So it's a bit of a mixture. When, if you've watched me do trees, um, it's a mixture of all of them techniques, really. It's just a dash and a drag. Or whatever it might be. We've got quite a deep fissure here. So we can go in and pop that in. Another one along here. We've got little rocks that are sitting over it, which we can add in. Just behind. Tops on them. And that, that actually does look quite good, doesn't it? I mean, we need to make sure the shape of the side of this rock isn't lost. So I'm just going to use this grey and bring that into focus a little bit. But I'm going to also apply some darker colours there. And then the top of this I want to catch as well. And that's like really all it all it is like it's just adding and subtracting values of colour. I just need to check to make sure we're still recording again. But that's essentially it. It doesn't need a lot of information to look quite convincing. So we're still recording, thank goodness. <laughs> Okie dokie. So now we've got those rocks in we could go a bit darker in places if we wanted to, like I'm just noticing there. Put a little bit more shadow behind here than I'm admitting to. But then if I if I go too dark, then we, we lose that fissure. So I have to go back in and use the lighter grey to try and reiterate that dark line there. Um, oh, there goes another pencil. Uh, 
anyway, I think that that'll do because it gives you the general shapes. Um, you can always emphasize that this rock has a definitive shape in the edge there in the corner, just to give it a bit more detail. And then obviously it's just a case of, right, okay, rust and brown and, you know, we can get rid of the green, greenish ones now, for now. Um, but now we just need to build up on this immediate foreground, really. So I'm just going to remove all my pastels. This is where the work is coming to an end. Um, <clears throat> we want to make sure this foreground looks very exciting, just as much as the rest of it. So we don't want to miss out on the details. So I've got a rusty orange here, and I'm just going to do that little scooch that I was talking about, just the slightest of pushes in one direction. And I'm just going to work out, I'm going to probably go a bit lighter than I am here. Um, just the shape again, of the way this land is growing, and the way it's living. It's probably too bright. But there is quite a lot of that in it. So I'm just going to go over it now with a more mustardy colour. Bearing in mind we can move quite quickly into this marine area. So we're gonna create all these shapes. We've got a light, so we've got back in with that light peach. A nice light highlighted area just here. And maybe the weeds are just slightly different. Just living there. But we're just roughly here. I'll do the same over here and just add some more highlights. Just to bring that back together. And then down here, where we've got green, I'm just going to soften it because it's mainly dark green. And we'll emphasise that more with the pencils, I think. And then where I've got my greeny black, which is this one. Just going to use that just to darken slightly here. So that we have just the two tones of shadow in this dip, tapping that in. Just getting ready to emphasise this dip along here. And again, just these just little scrapes. Little scrapes, that's all it is. It's very effective. And then I'm just looking at this green area again. Just get quite bright here. So I like to put this base in, highlight in, make it nice and strong. There we are. That's about it. It all kind of blends up into it. I don't want to. Hmm. So I'm softening that a bit. Clean finger again. And just bring some of this down into the dark greens. There's lots of different things going on. Again with the mustardy colour. And then we have this area which is more, more green really. It's very, very dark. But we can make it a bit darker. I'll show you in a sec. So I want to make this area darker. Just going to brush it with a darker pastel brush over it really and then push there we go it's pretty much nondescript there and then at that point starting to get more of the coloured weeds going down in that direction but it's just hints of colour it's so dark down here I'm tempted to make it quite black actually just to emphasise the shades so let's go in there quite black and then we can build it up from there. A little bit of green, just again, just to push into the dark, but I'm going to use the dark to push it away again. And we have some rocks and things on this ledge, so I'm just going to revisit that, push it downwards, I want it to be the right shape comes down more of a swoop and I've got let's do that and then again just thinking about what we've got above and below it's a swoop and over it's beautiful 
natural world that we live in come into life for us. Again, just hints of colour but not a lot. It's quite dark. We'll probably really emphasise that just by padding it back, padding it back. Let it just dissolve. There we go. And um, yeah, we're starting to get somewhere I think. Quite happy with this. Um, the cool thing is, once we get to the bottom, to this bottom half down here, there's not an awful lot to do apart from just putting the indications in of bushes and stuff. So I really feel like we're starting to get somewhere now. Let me make my basin more basin-y. And I'm actually just going to draw caution to the wind and just work on this area here. We have just this rock area first of all. We do have quite a dip and then a rise. And I'm just going to scooch along to that other dipped area, which is probably going to be a bit lighter again in colour, but we're just get, we're getting the basics of this working for now. Give me another little scoop. And it kind of goes up, there's rocks and that living along here. And we have a nice big rock there, and then a nice downward highlight there. And I'm just going to now start to work on um, what's going on here. But it's literally just now more emphasised, it's scooching if you like, just a, a wiggle. But we're going to keep it quite basic here, because most of this is in the dark. And that's probably going to bring everything together nicely for up here. So in this area here. I'm going to add some more greenery and we're going to put some rocks and stuff in just to make it look a little bit more interesting. But on the whole, it's quite dark now. So let's work along that line a bit. And just tap, tap it back. Now these rusts to sort of blend and work their way into the black, but we really want it to look nice and dark foreground. So at least if we put in here, although it's not particularly like the photograph because there's more details in the foreground, the more we sort of put less in the foreground, the more we're drawn into the subject matter. So that's why it's important sometimes to make decisions about these kind of things. I'm just looking here, we've got rocks and stuff, and a little highlight there. We're going to keep it industry, in, in, indescript for now. We'll have rocks on and stuff like that and then we can build. So where we have this rock here, we've got quite a bit of a drop going on with the... And I'm just going to now start to do more details. So just highlighting more of what I've already put in. And then we can go into more browns and add the rocks. I think we'll do the rocks shortly. Down here again, it's dark, can't see much, but we want to put some textures in. We don't really want a lot though. Because if we make this vega, we're going to be over there looking at him and not looking at the foreground as much. If you imagine a camera takes a photograph of this image, it might be that the focal point is there and around here is more hazy. But we'll see how it develops. It's, it's, it's coming to a close now. I'm just going to quickly check to make sure I'm still recording. Oh, I'd love a cup of tea. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. I do finish that one. Right. So it's that point again, checking to see if it's still recording. I'm going to take a photograph <coughs> and then I'm just going to probably just add a little, a little bit in the foreground there. We've been going to such pains to make sure everything else looks correct. But the foreground isn't that important. Um, rocks and stuff can get kicked about. It's not that important. Um, the main thing is just that you believe what you're looking at. And I'm quite help I'm quite, I quite like what we've got here so far. I've gone back into the original picture. And I'm going to go in with my grey. And let's start adding some rocks. 
And I'm just looking at my rock here. There's quite a, a white patch there that I want to add. A bit more light on the top of that one. It's funny, you can come back to them and 